The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got markets off to the downside this morning. Chairman Powell coming up in about an hour at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Going to be interesting to see what he has to say. His remarks are already out there. Uh, and let's jump over to the headline. Why not? We'll kick it off with that headline to begin things. Nearly all FOMC participants expect that it will be appropriate to raise interest rates somewhat further by the year end. That is in the remarks for the testimony that he is going to deliver to the House Financial Services Committee. The speech is part of his semi-annual appearance on Capitol Hill to update lawmakers on monetary policy. So that speech is out. He's going to be there at 10 in the morning. All but expected that he would say something to that degree, right, in terms of all participants, et cetera. But nonetheless, what do we got? We got the market trading lower. S&P's off by 15. You're at 44.19 right now. We back things up. You're talking about Friday action, 44.93. Thursday action, we're approaching 44.90 as well. Just like that, we're 70 points off of those price levels. We're approaching the lows of yesterday. That price level, 44.10 in the S&Ps right now. We're negative by about a third of a percent. We'll see if we get some volatility as Chairman Powell is up in about 52 minutes. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 68 points. That's about half a percent in the red. Dow off by 106, 34,250. The Dow, yesterday's low, 34,200. You started the day at 34,525. The Russell, negative by six this morning at 1879. We jump over to crude. Some volatility yesterday to the downside. We claw back some of those losses overnight. We're basically flat on the session, 71.28. You got gold with some volatility yesterday as well. Continuing to the downside, gold off $10 at 19.37. Got to jump over to notes and bonds. The 10-year chopping around a bit, 113.03. We're negative by seven ticks right now. We jump over to the dollar index. And you see, pretty interesting what gold is doing in light of the dollar index that's been pretty steady since the drop off last thursday dollar index dives down to 102.20 last thursday we've been chopping around a bit comparatively to the gold contract we have thursday spike higher and just like that we're actually back to basically where we were thursday before that acceleration right as opposed to you check out the gold the dollar index that would have put the dollar index all the way back up to 103.20 or 103.40 or even above that price level. So a little bit of disparity going on over there. We jump over to the VIX, volatility index. How about it, right? We got a little negative market, but it seems like maybe the remarks getting released alone sucks a little volatility out of the room. You get the VIX at 1371 as we get the market negative by 15 points right now and the VIX actually below where we were as of the close of yesterday. So no elevation in the VIX whatsoever. Even though we have a little bit of negative action in the market to kick things off all right where do we kick things off today and yeah whether it's the fed whether it's the economy um let me jump to the articles and yeah and let's just stay on the fed for a moment because that's going to be the focus at 10 o'clock the timing of the moves will be decided meeting by meeting i mean i don't think you're going to get a lot of teeth here especially as the remarks come out my colleagues and i understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. How many times have we heard that? They remain steady at 2%. We've heard that. Doesn't seem like there's going to be any headlines made. Excuse me. We will continue to make our decisions meeting by meeting based on the totality of incoming data and their implications for the outlook for economic activity and inflation, as well as the balance of risks. Now, I was saying on the program yesterday, I was talking to our man Kevin Hinks, saying I feel like there's not enough data coming down the line before that next July, late July meeting, where if they're taking the totality of the evidence and the totality of the evidence for the meeting we just had said that they could pause for a bit, well, I think that's going to be the same data. We only get one more month. I don't think one month of data can really change the totality of what they're looking at that may give them the ability to pause, at least for one more meeting. And that gives them... 
three, four months of catch up, which may be the case. Nearly all FOMC participants expect it will be appropriate to raise interest rates somewhat further by the end of the year. Reducing inflation is likely to require a period of below trend growth and some softening in the labor market conditions. You could already argue that's happening, though. And maybe it's just the trend that they want to continue without really crashing things. Yeah, and the prepared comments largely echoed his remarks at his post-meeting press conference last week. So if you were in the camp that you were going to get some big surprise here and that maybe Chairman Powell didn't convey to the market what he was ex trying to convey, there's no correction in the statement coming. That's my interpretation as well. The market trades lower a bit. Not sure why. Maybe just giving back some of the gains because not too many surprises in that statement as we're trading right now at 44.20. Yes, we've pulled back about 70 points from the highs we had on Thursday and Friday. But all things considered, folks, it's been a one-way trip from where we were on March 13th, just over three months ago from a price tag of about 38.50. Yeah, 38.39, the lows in the S&P. Let's jump around to... Some of the FANG stocks, we got Apple barely lower today. You make a high of 186. Is that, when was that? Was that last week? Yeah, that was Friday on the open. It's interesting. The daily has a different one, right? 187.50, I got pre-market, but 186.99 was the open on Friday. We're trading a little bit off that price level. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft's going to open down about 2 bucks. So FedEx had their numbers last night. We'll get into those. FedEx going to open down about $7 on their outlook, pretty much, going forward. Down about 7 bucks to 224 You jump over to UPS. A little bit of a hit as well. I was listening to Bloomberg late last night. Pretty interesting in terms of the comps, in terms of the run that FedEx has had this year, right? Trading from 175 up to 231 But the reason why is because look at what's been happening with FedEx, man. You're trading at 178 You back it up for five years. That's at the doldrums. You back it up on a monthly, and you were trading basically at prices coming into the year that you were trading at in 2015 versus UPS trading at 2015 at 104. They've run up dramatically as they had that acceleration in 2020. Now, UPS does a lot more business with Amazon as well. FedEx really doesn't do any business. UPS still doing a dramatic part of their business with Amazon, trying to diversify a bit. But they live and die on the sword of Amazon, which probably means why they went from 100 to 233 and pulled back to 160. They're trading right now at 174. FedEx is going to be off about $7 on their numbers as well this morning. We jump around. Article on CNBC I was reading this morning talking about Target racing to bring next day delivery to customers farther from city centers. I mean, this is the holy grail, right? Everybody's trying to do this, of course. And I often talk about, look at that pullback, man. 268 to 132. You're right back to where you came into COVID. The COVID lows of 92 bucks. Target taking it on the chin, man. And I will say, Target, a very enjoyable experience. I like going in there with Tommy. He plays with the toys. I grab a Starbucks at the front. Uh, I gotta ditch the toys before we get to the checkout, right? That's the that's and I don't I don't ditch them all. Uh, can't get rid of them all. But what does happen is I'm hyper aware because I'm in there all the time. I'm pulling up price tags of toys on Amazon that I'm in there looking at. And if I'm saving money on Amazon, I'm putting them back and they're not going to be purchased today because they're expensive, man. They are expensive and they have groceries, but they don't have refrigerated in almost any way. Nonetheless, folks, stay tuned. We've got a lot to talk about. We get the chairman coming up at 10. We'll be right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P off by 16 points right now, trading at 44.19. Look for that opportunity. Um, that price point in terms of 44.10 in the S&P is pretty interesting sometimes how the price levels are so close to the tick, right? If you got the discipline, man, and listen, that's that's easier said than done, right? To get into trades, to give yourself almost no room sometimes if that's the price you're looking at. But boy, yesterday's turnaround, you got to a price level yesterday of 44.44.75. You had a high pre-market of 44.45, right? You got within a quarter of a point of that price level and turned around and you're now 25 points below that price level and we'll see if we can find a bid today going to be interesting as i said don't really expect any huge surprises from the chairman especially after seeing the statement that pretty much aligned with what had been said already so he's comfortable with what the market is picking up and the market's picking up man that the pause might be as long as they can push it Okay, we all know that the chance is out there for them to raise more if they have to, but we'll see if that goes. All right, the submarine saga, right? Quite an ordeal. And, yeah, uh, hopefully there's some sign of optimism and some sign of hope as, as time does dwindle, though. But noises were detected in the search for that Titanic sub as oxygen dwindles, and they heard banging sounds at 30-minute intervals. I mean, the, the unfortunate part about this is one of the scenarios – going on right is that you have some problems you have an implosion you have an explosion whatever it is and the sub isn't even reachable if they're making noise maybe they are down there maybe they have the ability to find them uh what i will say is hindsight's always 20 20 man and it's a sad story no matter what um you got the founder and ceo in there so it's not like he's shoveling people down to the bottom of the ocean on a boat that he wouldn't jump on himself but boy, when you read some of this stuff, you see the articles, right? And then in hindsight, something goes wrong and you say maybe they weren't doing enough. And that letter that surfaced was the thing that was the most damning, in my opinion, in terms of you had a couple people leaving the company potentially. And then you had the industry professionals in 2018. OK, and this is an article in The New York Times. And this is the actual article that was written. And it was to the CEO and it was talking about. And this is signed by something like, what do they say, 30 members or something like that. 
Um, industry leaders, deep explorer explorers, deep sea explorers, and oceanographers warned in a letter to the chief executive, Stockton Rush, that the company's experimental approach and its decision to forego a traditional assessment could lead to potentially catastrophic problems with the Titanic mission. And in hindsight, of course, it's 2020. But boy, when you look at everything, right, you look at the controller and you look about going two and a half miles under the ocean, man. I mean, everyone's an adventure, but there's a father and a son on there, right? One of the Pakistan, um, they were from Pakistan, run a big company, one of the biggest companies over there. And you know that there's an element of trust there. We're trusting individuals. And boy, you know, I think back myself where when I was in college, went to Cancun, Mexico, and I remember going bungee jumping over a parking lot. And there's certain things in life, probably shouldn't have done that, right? Small things. But in the back of your head, you always think like everything's going to be okay. Uh, there's been some really interesting stories about journalists that had went on a couple of different vehicles, right? And there was one, I forget the guy's name, he was talking about that he went down on another type of vehicle. And I'm not going to do the good enough job here of surmising what happened. <coughs> Excuse me. But they got tangled up in the propeller and... His description of the moment when it happened, when he says to himself, this can't be real, right? It can't be real. I was sent here to cover the Titanic. Now I'm two and a half miles under the water in a vehicle that's stuck there. And you come to the realization. And he was saying in the interview when he finally realized where he was, what was happening and the predicament that he was in, that it was just a profound sadness that came over him. And I don't think enough people, myself included, sometimes take that risk versus the reward. And listen, for some adventurers, it's probably worth it, man. But I think in this instance, the risk versus reward was not calculated correctly. We're in the risk business in trading, right? And it was probably a riskier endeavor than the people on the boat were even led to believe or the submarine. And it's unfortunate, you know, in hindsight. But just just try and remember that as you go through different things in life, right? I think back to the time that I was going bungee jumping. And as an older adult now with a child, never would I ever do that. But you're in Cancun. There's alcohol involved. They were literally bungee jumping over a parking lot. Why would you ever do that, right? But you have this thing in the back of your head that says, well, other people are doing it. Everyone's doing it. They wouldn't do it if they thought that somebody would die. And there's a lot of times that happens and, and just uh, be able to trust yourself in those moments because, you know, this is one instance, unfortunately, it's a tough deal, man. Looking at that, you know, you got a father son on there, you got a businessman, you got the founder of the company, et cetera. But boy, looking at some of these articles, looking at some of the letters that were written and some of the interviews that they had given. I mean, it's a homemade submarine, man, going down two and a half miles to the bottom of the sea. And what they talked about was that that guy that got out, I think it was ABC News or CBS News, they sent a second sub down. They had a backup. There's no backup for them. So there's all these things that could have been done, um, and so that's where that goes in. Hindsight, of course, you know, and, and hopefully they get found, man. Uh, definitely encouraging hope that they got some sounds down there because it didn't seem like they had much of a chance even of getting found. So maybe something. But, yeah, sad deal, and... and be willing to listen to yourself, man. I don't just talk about it for the sadness, you know, for the tantalizing details. I'm sure CNN, you know, it's quite a story. And and the sad stories, unfortunately, get most headlines and the most eyeballs on news. So I'm sure CNN, cable TV, et cetera. But I talk about it because you think about it and, you, you know, you whether it's you, whether it's your children, right, making decisions like that. And, and be willing to say no, man, sometimes if those risks, because I don't think a lot of people really evaluate some of those risks. And I've done it myself, not, you know, for sure. And that's why I talk about it, because I think about that stuff, decisions you made in the past. And there's not many, you know, be young, be adventurous, go out there, take risks. It's OK. But make sure you're taking risks for the right reason. And you understand them, because I think back to that one of, of going bungee jumping over a parking lot in Cancun, uh, probably one of the stupidest decisions of my life for basically no joy. And. It was not a well-run operation, I'm sure, in Cancun spring break, 19, 2000, 1999, something like that, jumping over a parking lot. So 
All right, let's jump around and see what else we have going on. We jump back to the stocks with earnings. FedEx sitting at about 224, down about seven bucks on their numbers. We get the S&P down about 11 right now. We check back to that gold contract, gold. 1939, we check out the dollar index right now with Chairman Powell coming up in 34 minutes. Dollar at 102.60, we jump over to the two-year. Two-year yield. We got the two-year down about two ticks right now, 102.03. You jump over to that 10-year. And the 10-year was sitting at about 3.7. Let's see where we're sitting at right now. On the yield curve, we have the 10-year sitting at 3.76. And we got the two-year at 4.73. How about that one, right? 4.73 for the two years, some amazing deals on CDs, man. And that might go away. So there is some risk there in terms of, you know, if you're thinking about putting yourself in a CD, man, don't just think you can roll out 12-month CDs for an eternity because things could change over the next year or two. Think about your duration. Maybe try and set that duration out, whether you're going two-year ladder, five-year ladder, 10-year. Um, push those numbers out because we might be seeing those numbers drop at least over the next years. We're not going back to zero, in my opinion, but it's a new regime. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets open. You got the S&P slides a bit. We're off by 18 points right now, trading at 44.16. You got the Dow off 137 points, 34,224. And you got the Russell right now, negative by 11, NASDAQ 100, trading down about 70 points. Let's see how FedEx is trading on their numbers. A little bit of a lift, only down about 2.6% right now. As I said, UPS, a far different company, but still down uh, off about 1.8% right now. We see how the big dogs are trading. Apple shares catch a lift. Apple flat on the session right now. Microsoft shares down about six tenths. Google shares down six tenths as well. We jump over to Facebook shares. Meta down three tenths percent right now. Tesla, look at Tesla, man, up a quarter percent for Tesla. Pushes two set two seventy nine in the pre market. Look at this run, man. Whew. You talk about a run. One fifty one to two seventy five. You're up almost a hundred percent. Up almost a hundred percent in less than two months crazy no other word to describe it man crazy all right what else we got pulled up how about money funds 5.5 trillion how about that one man money funds with record 5.5 trillion, trillion see the case for the pile to grow funds now have tools to extend maturities pick up extra yield out there money market industry one of the biggest winners on wall street as the fed has hiked rates and yeah you talk about the numbers man let's just get down to it so and this is the, there's a money fund symposium, the marquee annual event for a business that has seen assets grow by some a trillion dollars in the past year to a record 5.5 trillion. And look at the run up, right? And you're talking about here, the effective funds rate is in the red, okay? And the money assets are in the black. So what's interesting here is that you have the money funds at zero, from basically 2010 to 2018, okay, and yeah, they're they're you know they didn't get above a trillion until the Fed started trying to hike into the end of 2018. What's interesting is when COVID hit, the rates dropped to zero, but people still flooded to safety and cash. But then rates took off, and they added another trillion dollars onto the cash pile that they had in there. And you're sitting at $5.5 trillion, man, which is quite a number. The key is that the money funds now have a range of higher yielding assets to shift into, led by T-bills after the resolution of the debt ceiling, but they also have much more clarity around the Fed's path. So they have less need to hide out in overnight markets where they still have almost $2 trillion stashed. The money market industry has to be feeling quite good at the moment. This is the head of U.S. rate strategy at Bank of America. Assets are up a lot. Supply is increasing rapidly. And and money funds now have a greater ability to express clearer views of the market. Yeah, there's a lot of money, man, to say the least. It's going to be interesting to see how that affects the market going forward. And this one will be an interesting one as well from the journal over here I was reading this morning. So you get the Supreme Court with a few big cases coming down. You got affirmative action there. You have Biden student loans. You got one more, too. So I read an article yesterday. So some some big decisions that are looming. One of them, affirmative action, in terms of just how it plays into companies. You got a lot of companies that have goals, racial goals for diversity, et cetera. And it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. You got many employers, including Salesforce, more Merck and Paintmaker PPG Industries, say they'll maintain existing corporate goals to broaden employee representation, regardless of the court's ruling. The uncertainty leaves employers in a bind as they try to address the possibility of discrimination lawsuits from supporters and detractors of their initiatives. So you're going to see that one play out, man, if that happens in the court, whether, you know, regardless of what you feel on the issue or not, in terms of the corporate structure of things, that is going to play out if the Supreme Court reverses affirmative action. We're not going to get into that hot topic, man. Um, diversity is a great thing. I think we all agree on that. What I, you know, what I will say is I have many friends, I have great friends, Asian friends, 
who really have a hard time. I know that's the other side of this affirmative action argument, right? Man, they got a tough deal if you're Asian because you got some real competition and many times you're not getting in um, because of those types of affirmative action and so forth. Yeah. All right, what else we got? Let's jump around. We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Cakesack coming up after the break. We'll talk some Forex, but we'll take a look at the dollar as we jump around before that. You get the dollar index right now, 102.63, pretty much where we started the program at. No real movement on the dollar. We got Chairman Powell coming up in 24 minutes. We got the 10-year at about 113 right now. Let's check back in on that gold contract that's been moving a lot. Gold down about 8 bucks at 1939 right now. We check out silver. Look at silver, man. From 24 down to 22.83, we pull back silver on a daily off of the highs of 20. Let's see where we are Fibonacci-wise. Yeah, below the 50%. We're coming back into these lows of recent last month. That low, 22.78. Look at that. What did we just hit? 22.80 within two pennies. Two pennies. Let's see where gold is in that same. That low back in May, gold. Look at this, 1939, and we just hit 1936.20. Yeah, and we had some volume in gold, man, almost 250,000 contracts down there. You just did 260 when we got down to 1936 a few days ago. And the day is young, we'll see where we go, but those are some big numbers for sure. All right, what else we got? Let's talk a little bit of China, geopolitics. Uh, Biden's calling China, China's Xi a dictator, and China not happy with that. What happened to things getting better with China, right? Now you, the, these headlines, they're pretty tantalizing, man. Uh, does it get any worse than, than calling Xi a dictator and, and Xi kind of striking back? President's comments at the California fundraiser follow a di diplomatic effort to halt deteriorating relations. Seems like that could be reversing pretty quickly. Wasn't the Secretary of State Blinken just over there trying to make amends and, and things didn't go well there? And it seems like things are ratcheting up now using the word dictator. Not usually the way you want to ease things. So be careful um, on that front as well. All right, what else we got? Well, it's just articles I've been reading this morning talking about the journal. An interesting one out here in the journal talking about, I referenced this earlier in the show, forget the Fed, focus on the economy. It's easy to get caught up on whether the Fed's going to hike interest rates, but it's time to step back. Only rarely should investors care about the, with, what the Fed says and even what it does at its meeting. What really matters for long-term returns is getting the direction for travel right, and, when, and that comes from the economy, where the Fed's fine-tuning misses the point. Investors are already looking further ahead. Rather than preparing for the still higher interest rates, markets are well along in pricing an economy with lower but fairly sticky inflation, higher for longer rates, and continued growth. Stocks are up. Yields are broadly stable at what used to count as a high level, and risk premiums on you junk bonds are falling fast. In the stock These markets, all point in the same direction, and it's a bullish one, all, right? It is, I think, future, I think right? we're going to have a new like normal, endeavor, and I'm not right? sure what that new normal is going to be. Impossible. Get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report.
New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures right now, negative by about 20 points, trading at 44.14. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts a new issue out every week on Mondays. He's got updates throughout the week when warranted. You can come on over to the front page of TFNN. You hit the newsletter tab. You hit subscribe. It's $97 for the month, folks. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. When you sign up, you also gain access to a couple of archived webinars. Teddy just did one in April uh, talking about the forecast for the webinar, but things may be changing as we got a new Fed regime uh, with pausing slash skipping. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So let's talk a little bit of Fed, man. We know you've been talking about hikes, and I was surprised, especially by kind of just uh, – the general verbiage, we get the chairman's remarks already out this morning. He's talking in 17 minutes in front of Congress as well, um, but kind of surprised with even the language that he used. Uh, they're trying to sound hawkish. I'm not sure I believe it. What do you think of the Fed action, man, as they pause? I'm very surprised, absolutely surprised that they did. I thought that they would be going for rate hikes for at least another few sessions before they uh, put a pause on. So uh, especially because the economic data I don't think is – reflecting what they really want as far as their goals yet you know i don't think they remotely achieve what they're trying to you know at least what they said they were trying to do you know so yeah i'm definitely very surprised that they have uh stopped their uh their rate hikes i think we still have more to come uh this this whole pausing and now even potential easing talk that's going on i think is a little bit of a you know getting ahead of uh, you know ourselves if you will so i uh, will see what happens with the pause you know let's sure. see how the economic data comes out over the next couple of months i really don't think that over the next couple of months these numbers are going to trend enough in the right direction to warrant them staying on a pausing basis and not go back to a, um, a hawkish uh, outlook yeah and it would seem like i mean we all know they got they got a long way to go that's for sure man um and i think they're getting a little hopeful my opinion in terms of where we go and and Maybe they give it a few months. Uh, I don't know how they come back. What do you think about the next meeting? And I know we're just, you know, not throwing darts mm -hmm. here, but nobody really knows what's going to happen. But it, it's interesting that if they're willing to pause right now, right, is is anything going to change by July 28th in terms of that much data that really is going to change things? It, I, I find, you know, the next few months, yeah, you can see some action, I'm sure, as, as the numbers plow in. But even when I'm just looking at July, I'm like, well, if they're there right now, man, what, what's going to happen in July? Um mm -hmm. That could be so dramatic. You know, you got a few months of data that persists. I think it might be undeniable. But if they're willing to go right now, I just don't see how things change with July. What do you What do you think about you know one month, three month type scenario going forward? 
Sure. Well, I think one month, the only way you're going to probably see them go back to a hawkish stance right away in and in the next meeting would be if, let's say, unemployment uh, for July comes out, you know, in a couple of weeks, it really comes out good, meaning yeah. that unemployment goes down to an extreme degree, you know, yeah. maybe where it goes back to the levels where it was like two, three months. I, you know, I, I don't I don't know exactly what the amount of that of, of a drop would have to be, but something sure. like that would go against their, their narrative of what they're trying to do. So that would be a big one. Um, and then I think you're going to have also your other inflationary numbers, too. Like, you got to look at what's going on in the EU and the UK. You know, they're, they're imploding because of inflation, you know, and that's going to be reflective in our markets as well. And I think that the, especially you have to watch the transports, you know, and things like that. I mean, if, if especially if unemployment does go down extremely um, sharply. And then if you do see at least not necessarily a flattening, but a rise in any type of inflationary numbers, you know, like with CPI and PPI, then I think, yeah, absolutely. They could jump back on the hawkish stance, maybe not in July, but they might start leaning towards saying, hey, if this not these numbers start trending back up that we will be going back on the hawkish stance. You know, so I think that's yeah. for in, a, in a one to three month period, that's how you can look at it. Nice, yeah. Hey, we have a question. Uh, we got a caller on the air, all right? Let's sure. jump over. We got Jeff from New Jersey, and they got a question for you, Teddy, about talking about arbitrages between cash and futures. Jeff, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, right, that was my question <laughs> uh, for Teddy. Is, is it possible to find arbitrage opportunities between the FX uh, cash market and futures market? Um, yeah, so what you're talking about there is like when you're trading premium at a discount or at a um, – uh, okay, like for instance, if you're talking about trying to pull that kind of ARB off, uh, you have to have, first of all, really good liquidity and really good data feeds. Uh, that is very, very key. Uh, so in order to pull it off too, um, you got to look at what, if you're going to try and do that, you have to make sure that you're trading the front month future for sure. And you got to be careful around the rollover months. So I would say that, especially like when you have, you know, your, your roller, your expirations for those uh, contracts would be March, June, September, and December. So during those four months, or especially like the, uh, the last week of the month prior to that, I'd be very careful trying to pull off an arbitrage between the cash market and the futures, because you have a lot of spread, uh, rollover which will cause a price mm -hmm. differential where it's going to really scramble that trade up. Um, but there is, like for instance, when it comes to numbers especially, uh, if you have um, a lead in one, uh, you can lay off in the other. So I would say when you have, but now once again, that gets back to your liquidity. If you don't have a very solid connection you're going to be behind the curve or your execution is not going to come off that well um, in either the futures or in the cash market, especially, you know, so that's you're, kind of you're trade saying because for, the, they catch yes. up with each other so quickly. Uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. You know, I mean, for to really pull off that trade successfully, um, you're looking more at an institutional type of trading environment where you really, really, really have to have direct market access. So if you don't have those components, I would just try – I'm just going to be honest with you. It's going to be very rough to try and pull off that kind of a trade. You know, I mean, does okay. it exist? A absolutely. Um, the, just the ability to pull off consistently those trades, um, that's going to be very, very difficult. So, But it does exist. I mean, ex especially like – um, I, like you can do it for both the S and P's. You can do it for the bonds. You can do it for the cat. You know, for the currencies. Um, that trade does exist. And usually, like what you have to do is look at the trend premium. You know, for instance, if your if your market's trending higher, okay, for instance, whether it's uh, euro, pound, whatever versus whatever currency and, and that futures. If you see one that really really jumps, and you're going to probably see it more in the cash and the futures. You know, that would be a, a situation where you can sometimes ca catch that lag in that arb so those are the situations where um if you're going to look for that trade those are the moments where you have to be there those are your most highest probability of of having those situations and being able to execute you know so it's something that on a day-to-day -day basis hour in by hour out um it's going to be a very tough trade and i wouldn't i would advise against it though just to be you know straight right, so it sounds like for the retail trader to if you notice uh, a jump in the cash market quick go look at the futures market if it hasn't jumped yet maybe right. it's about to right exactly now but remember if you're trying to do that trade you're looking for a scalp that's not something that's going to hang on very long yeah. especially with the futures oh, yeah. because you have the spreads you have to be take that into account
And Jeff, I think, okay. and Teddy, if you can, if you can, I, I'm not put words, but I think what Teddy's saying as well is, you know, the technology that you need, and it's almost something that in a lot of places, if it was that simple, though, Jeff, wouldn't computers almost be not computers, but you know, if it was that simple, where, you know, cash is moving, and then you just get ahead of the futures, isn't that where you're really dealing with almost? This is where AI and computers are almost starting to take over to eliminate a lot of those ARB opportunities. Is that true, exactly. Teddy? Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I was asking is that I, I figured the, the futures in the cash market must be so tightly bound and computers are so yeah. fast mm -hmm. uh, and there's so many traders that you might be able to Jeff possible. like Teddy was saying but I think that was a great answer Teddy because man that's Thank you, you just got to be so fast nowadays with computers Jeff I'd be careful yeah okay great thanks guys thanks for the call Teddy can you stick Take around care. for one more segment all right let's look at some of the sure. levels and some of the currencies we'll be right back folks okay. stay tuned their new trading room the Tiger's Den hosted at Discord DFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours and now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den available to all tigers and tigresses for just one dollar for the year there's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders in the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up to Today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the market in red territory. S&P's off by 21 points. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Don't forget to check out the Tiger Forex report, folks. Uh, and, Teddy, I just want to jump right into it. Maybe we could talk a little bit of yen, because I know sure. the yen has been doing some stuff. Gold really getting hit. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you think of the yen action as we push, push some lofty levels here? I'm pulling up the chart as we speak, as we're trading at 142.24. You've talked to us. I mean, it's interesting when I look at the dollar index, Teddy. Versus something like the yen, which, boy, you got a trend, man. We're making new mm -hmm. recent highs today at 142.25. You got gold pulling back recently, as usually could be the case, as that yen trades higher. 
Yes, well, we have new new highs coming today, on the, that's for sure already, which is nice. Uh, I like the trend, you know. I mean, even with the Fed on pause, I think that you're overall, you have strength in the U.S. dollar yen. I'm a buy break uh, uh, forecast right now for this market for a while. I see no reason to think that the trend would uh, start to become very bearish. For I don't see any reason why it would. For I mean, There's no variables, fundamental or technical, that I can see coming about. I really do like the um, the lows that we set a couple few weeks ago. I think that's a very good support base for uh, the US dollar yen. Even if we have a pullback, I think you're going to find it hard to fall below that area. Um, and I like I like higher move highs over the next, uh, not just few sessions, but over the next few weeks for the US dollar yen. Nice. You can't deny the trend, man. 142.26 for sure. And and that price level looks at about 139. Is that where you look in the end about where it was at beginning of June? Uh, look for some yes, support? I, I would say the lowest I would see them getting to, down to would be about 138.5. You know, but nice. yeah, around 139 even, I think you have a very good support uh, level there. Okay, nice. Well, Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. Uh, we appreciate the education as always, and we look forward to talking to you next week, man. All right. Sounds good. Take care, Tommy. Sorry. Say that again. I lost you for a second, Teddy. Oh, no. I just said, I said, thank you. I said, uh, thank you. I'll see you next I week. Appreciate this. I appreciate this. I apologize. My earphones are having a few it's problems okay. today. But thank you, as always, for the education, All man. Right. Uh, folks, check out the Tiger Forex Report. Teddy puts out a great report every Monday. We talk to him every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. And, yeah, you talk about uh, currencies, man, driving so much of what's going on. Currencies, yields, the market. Folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day off with me. Stay tuned. we got our man Basil Chapman coming up live. And you got Chairman Powell as well. So it should be an interesting hour. we got live programming all day. Everyone's back, folks. Have a great one. <laughs>